I've been looking out for a Radio Shack TRS-80 Model 2 computer for months, and I finally managed to find one, and it didn't even need shipping. It was a local purchase. And as an added bonus, when I picked this up, he fired it up, and it actually works. It booted up into CPM, which I'm not familiar with. I'm familiar with the uh, Tristos, but I know it works. And in addition, he had replaced all of the foam pads in this keyboard. And as far as I could tell, just from the quick demo he gave me, it looks like everything was working just fine from a keyboard perspective. So really what this machine needs is some TLC. It needs some cleaning up. You can see that uh, it's a little dusty in these areas. The drive door, the Shugart drive is a little creaky, but it works. Uh, it has this interesting screen uh, protector, or uh, I guess it was for glare at the time. And I know because we used to use these things on all of our machines at the time. Uh, I think I'm just going to pull that right off. So I'm going to start in, just give it a quick cleaning, and then we're going to pop the cover off, which I've never done before. So you're going to be first right in there with me. First time I'm pulling a cover off of one of these to uh, to see the innards. Very, very excited to get this underway. So this computer came with a box of 10 floppies and unfortunately many of them were a little worse for wear and as an example this one here the hub ring is clearly no longer connected to the diskette anymore and in fact this diskette doesn't even spin it's completely seized up inside there so this diskette has seen better days. It did come with one copy of the CPM operating system and this is the only disk I can get to boot up on this so we're taking a, well I wouldn't say a risk but uh, certainly we will try to do what we can today in terms of creating our first program. Okay so I've got the machine put back together and there's no screws left behind so I'm assuming it's it's good to go and now we're going to I was going to say fire it up, but I don't want any fire, so we're going to turn it on. And uh, I've set up another microphone here just to record, hopefully, um, a really good audio track of this thing turning on. When this thing spins up, it sounds amazing to me. We are turning it on. I always have a bit of trepidation at this moment. Who knows what's going to happen with the capacitors that are this old. So here we go.
All right, sounds amazing. We'll go ahead and we'll put the operating system diskette in. And we're booted into CPM 2.1. So our first prompt is for how many drives, and in this case we know we only have one drive on the machine, and we fall into a very familiar A prompt. And just like MS-DOS, you can do a directory or DIR command, and that gives us the list of files on this diskette. So what I found out when I first saw this listing and did some research into CPM is that this is by no means a full set of .com utility files. For CPM. We also don't have any high-level languages like BASIC or even COBOL, but what we do have here is ASM, which is the CPM assembler, but to use the assembler I would need to learn how to use the editor, and I don't think that's necessary for the purposes of our Hello World program. I think we can get away with using another utility called DDT, which is the Dynamic Debug Tool, and for anyone familiar with the DOS debug command, it's really the same thing. You can do this sort of uh, hex dump of memory, and you can also use the L command, which essentially disassembles the memory into assembly code. And we're also gonna make use of the A command, which is the assemble, and that's actually gonna be the one that we use to create our assembly code. It's very rudimentary, there's no labeling, but it, it works for our purposes. But in order to do this, we just need to take a quick look at how the memory is organized and as well as the FDOS or BDOS function calls that we're gonna use for this. So let's start with the CPM interface guide. And on page one, it shows us how the memory is logically divided. And this area, located at 100 hex, is where user-generated programs reside. And page two references functions that we can call in the FDOS. Now there's 36 functions, but the one that we're interested in for today's exercise is this print string function. So we put a nine in register C, and we point DE at our 16-bit string address, and then we call the function. Okay, so let's enter our hello world code. We're gonna start assembly at location 100. And our first instruction is an MVI, which is a move immediate. And this is putting our function call identifier into C when we make the call to the BDOS. And we now have to load D with a pointer to where we're going to put our hello world string. And to do that, we need an LXI, which is a 16-bit load, and that's taking the memory address of 0110 hex and putting it into D. One thing to note, as I was about to do it, was that spaces are not allowed in the DDT utility. So next I'm going to do a call to 0005, which is our BDOS print string, or just the BDOS routine. So in most cases with assembly, I would be using this return function. And that would be true if we were running this as a .com file from the operating system. But because we're operating this from within the DDT and we want to actually pass execution back to the DDT prompt, we're going to use a reset seven. And that's it, that's our code. So I press enter and that takes us back to our prompt and I can do an, a list of 100 and now we can see all of our instructions there. Now, we're making reference to memory location 110, and right now there's a bunch of garbage text in there from when DDT was loaded, and it went used the same transition area. So we have to overwrite those locations with our new hex values, 
for the Hello World. And in addition, I would like it to clear the screen. And I'm just going to add some line feeds in there to kind of put it in the center of the screen, just makes it a little nicer and maybe some line feeds afterwards before we pass control back to DDT. So in order to do that, I need the S command and we're going to, again, start entry at 110. And the S command lets us overwrite hex values at specific addresses. So I've gone ahead and converted the hello world text from ASCII to hex, so I know what all the hex values are. I also know that an OC, for example, code will clear the screen. And then to do a bunch of line feeds, I mean, I could have written a loop, but that's more complicated. Frankly, it's very easy for me to just do this. Okay, so I'll put in a few line feeds, and then we're gonna start entering our hello world text. So we have a 48, 4C, 4C, 4F, 52, 4C, 44, 21. Now that I've got those in, we're going to do a few more line feeds. Now, in order for BDOS to know when the string ends that it's displaying on the screen, we need to add a dollar sign at the end. And that is hex 24. And that is it. Any invalid key will take us back to the prompt. And we are ready to go. So fingers crossed. <laughs> it's been a while since I've done this assembly code, so who knows what could happen. And with assembly, they can do pretty much anything. So we're going to do a G, which is go to 100, and that will execute our code. And there we go. It actually did it. It actually printed Hello World on the screen. So this is really, really awesome. I just wanted to take this opportunity to send out a thanks to Asagi Electric. Uh, your channel's amazing. And uh, I think it really sparked in me this desire to take some of my machines, get them off the shelf, dust them, clean them, get them ready to go, and actually use them again. Um, and not fearing that they're gonna, you know, the caps are gonna blow or anything like that. I just wanted to, you know, take it and start using it. And, and this prompted me to do it. And Obviously, I'm not going to stop here. So I just wanted to again say thank you very much uh, for getting this challenge out there and looking forward to the next one. So thank you.